Well, hello everyone, Dan Hart with Dan Hart Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am out here on one of my mineral claims doing some basic prospecting and exploration. We have some big news, some really exciting news, and we're gonna be here having fun. So wish us luck, and I hope you enjoy. And today with me, I have Grizzly Discovery's Chief Prospector, Sibo. Hey. And this guy. Another Grizzly Discoveries prospector, Cash, also a former student of mine. And myself. We're out here on one of my mineral claims that Grizzly Discoveries is interested in. And we're here doing a cooperative preliminary assessment between myself, Dan Hurt Prospecting, and these two, Grizzly Discoveries, to see what is on the claim because we are planning, I am planning to sell or option this claim to Grizzly Discoveries. But everyone wants to know what's on it before they get committed into any kind of contract. Magnetite? Yeah, black sulfide's in there. Definitely magnetic, mag magnetite in there. Gold fire uh, follows the iron horse. Always a good sign. We are actually heading over there to do our prospecting, but uh, Sibo got distracted by a shiny rock. Every rock, hit every rock. That's the way you find the good stuff. Don't leave one rock unturned. And it's a long uphill climb right now, so taking a break, I'm okay with that. We won't start the actual prospecting until we get to the top of the ridge. We have to get up onto the area where we're interested in, and we have some sort of previous uh, knowledge that there might be something good up there. So we're getting to our good spot before we do any real prospecting, as long as we can get Sibo to stop being distracted. Okay, apparently Cash gets distracted along the way too. What'd you find? I like rocks. White I, rocks? I found quartz and possibly something some, that some looks... Some iron in there. Yeah. Iron's a good sign. Looks very similar to what's at that midway mine there. Absolutely. The midway mine is about a kilometer. Oh, mushrooms growing out of cow patties. They're going to be uh, dung lovers. Do I get to see like pink elephants if I try eating one of them? Yep. Perfect. Okay, so this guys is balsam root. This is a flower plant that the natives used as a source of food. The small greens were boiled and there's small sunflower-like seeds that come out of the flowers that they ground down. And also the root was one of their main winter foods. Uh, really, really good survival food if you're stuck out in the Okanagan. Doesn't taste very good, but you'll survive. No. <laughs> Those two are mountain goats. Oh my goodness, they just keep going and going. <laughs> this is a big hill for me to hike up. Are we up onto the new claim yet? There yet, Cash? So we're about 300 meters from where we want to get to. You can see that dead tree actually up there, I think is actually. It's about right? Yeah. We can't actually take samples until we get onto the claim that we're actually prospecting here. We're allowed to look at rocks along the way because that is someone else's claim, but we're not allowed to actually go and take any samples. And really, even the f fancy shiny rocks we found down there, because it's not on the claim that we're looking for, uh, they mean nothing to us. We need to get onto the claim where we can start taking samples that we can send off for assays and find out what's really in the rocks. And a line right up there is where the claim starts. Now, while I sit down for a breather, beside the lupins, I'll explain the good news I said I had. Now, a year ago, I managed to make a deal with Grizzly Discoveries about my midway mine and a whole bunch of land around it. We made an option agreement, I'll explain what that is in a second, and transferred over the midway mine to Grizzly Discoveries, who now are looking at actually mining it. Really great property. Well, I recently acquired another chunk of land right above the Midway Mine. And I went and saw Grizzly the other day and explained what I had for land, did some negotiations with him, some arm twisting, some head bashing, all that kind of stuff. And we came up with a you know gentleman's agreement, a little handshake, that we both would go up, Grizzly Discoveries and myself, and prospect it. And the plan is, and it's probably gonna go through, the plan is that we're gonna do another option agreement on this piece of property to move it into Grizzly's portfolio, especially since it's right beside the Midway Mine. It creates a much bigger chunk of land that they can mine. But before we actually go and make a formal agreement, we want to know what we're both getting into. I want to know what's here better. Grizzly wants to know what's here before he, you know, commits any big money to it. And then we'll go back and negotiate prices and all that kind of stuff for an option agreement. And that'll bring me to today's geology lesson of the day. 
option agreements. It is a mining terminology where a prospector finds a piece of land and then options it to an exploration company or a mining company. And what that is, is we make a formal agreement, a contract, that they pay up front a little bit of money for the land and it gives them three years to prospect, it can be any length of time, but in my case it's three years, three years to prospect that land and at the end of that three years they have the option to purchase the land outright. If they don't like what they found in their prospecting and exploration, they return it to the prospector. If they like it, they pay the prospector out for that land. That's known as an option agreement. Now there's all sorts of clauses in, in the contract and details that maybe give certain aspects what they can do, where they can do it, what might happen to the claim after the fact, all this stuff. But the main idea of an option agreement is the big company has the option after prospecting it to buy that land. And often that comes with that as a long-term smelter royalties if they mine that land that goes back to the original prospector. That is what an option agreement is in mining. That's today's geology lesson of the day. And now I've got my breath back, I can start hiking again. I'm really interested in that knoll over there. That is where I run to most of my prospecting today. It's right in line with the Midway Mine Fault and also the Ocean Picture Stone Fault going up onto that knoll. That is where I'm interested in. So we made it. We made it to the claim here. Now we can start not just looking at rocks, we can actually start taking samples that we can take back to the geologists back at the camp for actual evaluation and then send off to the labs to get assays done on them to see how much gold and silver and other metals are in those samples. Time to start breaking rocks and collecting them. We're at our first outcrop and slough from the outcrop. So now it's the time to put our eyes down to the ground and see what is coming off that knoll right there. Hey, I see quartz. Quartz is always a first good sign. Oh, grizzly prospector. Is uh, that quartz? I think that's calcite. Oh. It's pretty hard though. Did you drop your acid? You dropped some acid? I dropped some acid, Dan, oh. you know me. I was that student. <laughs> you were. <laughs> So most likely that was quartz, but it was in the float, so it doesn't tell us much. Blah, tell us? Tell us much. Tell us much. We want to find quartz like that that's still in the bedrock, so we know exactly where it's coming from. But that's a good indication that something up this way is shedding quartz. Now this is a really interesting rock. We got this neat conglomerate right here, but the fact that it's all round means it's most likely a piece of glacial till, so not something from the claim here. You know, Ice Age glaciers, whatnot, brought this in and deposited it here. If I was down in a river valley, I would say that it was a river deposited rock, but up on the hill like this, I'm guessing that's a glacial deposited rock. And I do see other big rounded rocks close by, so I'm kind of off of the bedrock, which is right there, and onto a bit of glacial till. Let's get back to the bedrock. It's great having three of us out here doing this. We separate so we cover more ground. We still keep an eyesight of each other. We also have radios so we can talk. Cash is way over there. Sibo's up here. I'm down here. Sibo rocked around the other side of this little knoll. I'm walking around this side of this little knoll. When you're out prospecting like this, it's hard to cover 100% of the ground. The more people you have, the more chances that you'll stumble across that just perfect right spot. It was a beige, probably an andesite porphyry down here as well. Yeah, that's what this whole scree pile looks like. Yeah, no difference in the outcrops I hit over here. Sibo is on the best looking ground over there. Great big knob, big talus slope below it. But because he's there, it doesn't make sense for me to go over there. It makes more sense for me to go to where he's not and look at this ridge here, even though he's on the good looking stuff. I'm onto some vascular basalt over here. Small bubbles, but bubbles all the same. Yeah, that's what that pumicey looks like. Okay, the first material that I'm starting to get excited about. This is a carbonate seam. I'm still in the talus, so up there somewhere is gonna be where it came from. Carbonate seam, I see a few pieces, like little tiny chunks of it. Here's a bigger chunk. Ooh, rusty. Let's get the close up on these, show you what neat stuff I'm looking for. Now this is a quartz carbonate up here. So there's quartz crystals, the carbonate that have, has rotted away. There's pockets of sulfides that have rotted away. And this is the type of stuff that gold likes to hide in. So there's a beautiful sample. Again, it's in the talus. So I'd love to find where these come from in the hard rock, but we're on the right track. Here's another juicy little sample I found of basically that same seam. Obviously carbonates of some sort, a little bit of quartz, maybe even a bit of druzy in there, and then rotting out sulfides. I said, I'm pretty sure we got a fault contact 
back here, I can see a fault line coming through and it's really brittle at the contact. And uh, so there's definitely something happening up here. Excellent. I just found a quartz carbonate uh, sample down here that's really rusty. You can see where sulfides have rotted away from it. It's in the talus still, but it's right below this rock bluff. So I'll probably find it in situ. Roger that. Over and out for now. And then up top there, I found also two of these uh, infills. Now these are what we call agates, but these are actually quartz nodules. Said earlier, I found some vescular basalt. So that's basalt that has holes in it. Well, some of it has filled in with silicated material, in this case, quartz, maybe a bit of agate. And I found two, what we'd known as, you know, agate nodules or quartz nodules, geodes even, little guys. And here's another showing of quartz. These look to be quartz crystals. Yes, that's another chunk of a geode or a, a nodule. Not what we're looking for for gold, though. You won't find gold in those usually. Well, almost, almost never. And this is a good looking find. So this is very similar to what we find over at the Midway Mine, just smaller scale, but that means we're on the right track. I would assume. Now there's a geode. That was a big bubble in lava that filled in quartz crystals and calcite. That's calcite in the center, quartz crystals around the outside edge. These are fun. Sometimes you can dissolve them in vinegar and they uh, dissolve the calcite away and show just the crystals left behind. But yeah, there's a great big infill. Just got back to my backpack where my camera was, my real camera. I have been finding signs of the quartz seam that we know is gold bearing or from the midway. It looks identical. I can't find it in situ. I just find it in the talus. But somewhere on this knob, it is uh, shedding more of that same ore that we see at the midway, which is over there somewhere, over there. And Sibo just radioed me saying he found sulfides up the hill, which is a really good sign. Yep, this talus here coming off of that bluff right there is loaded in this material, just loaded in it. So I've called the boys down so to see if they can look around the lump and see if we can find where it's coming from. Hey boys, I'm finding lots of this stuff down here. It might be worth even taking a sample of it. 100%, we're on our way to you in a sec here, Dan. I just gotta finish this one up. So yes, finding lots of ore right here. Checked out the talus just to the left and I didn't see any ore. Checked out the talus to the right and I didn't see any ore. And this little talus slope right here seems to be loaded in it. So that really tells me that it's coming off the central chunk of this lump, not off either side and not even up farther up behind because anything up behind would have made its way to the two sides. And uh, this talus slope right here just goes straight up right to that lump. Called the expert over to see what he thinks of uh, my quartz and calcite and the aura specimens I found. She's vuggy. Vuggy. And druzy. Oh, that's just the agate you're looking at now. Oh, there's druzy quartz on the outside. It's nice. Yeah. You should be interested in the ore specimen though, man. Ore yeah, specimens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shiny rocks. <laughs> this stuff looks very similar to what we've been pulled, we see at the underground workings of the Midway. It's almost cherty. Yeah, it's almost like an agate rather than a quartz. Yeah. But uh, we see a lot of this stuff coming out from the underground workings of the Midway. Yeah, I'll definitely take a sample of that. Yeah, that's worth sampling? Yeah, it's botrytal right here, a little bit. Botrytal? Yeah, we got the little bubbly. Oh yes, and how about this one up at, up at the top there where it gets dark? Oh yeah, we got some mossiness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely worth having a look. Definitely churdy, quartzy. So and some sul some sulfides rotting or, or some rust on it on this one here. Yeah, yeah, that one had some. We you bang your finger? Nah. <laughs> nah. Whoa. Flesh wound. Nothing but flesh wound. That's definitely agony. It's got that uh, bluish hue to it almost. Right. We are about to get dumped on. Oh yeah. Look it out there. It is starting to rain hard. I might want to put the jacket back on. Sibo found it in situ, or at least well, a little bit. There seems to be a little vuggy infill right there. And he says the rock all around here is very silificated. Silicified. Silicified, okay. I like my version better. Get that out though. So busting into powder. I think that's like an agate infill though. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's got a blue hue to it. There, there we go. Totally an agate. That's like those two agates I just showed you. You can tell by the back edge of it. Yeah, flat. Well, this yeah. is interesting. Let's take a sample and move on. So what he has found here is just straight up agates. Amygoidal agates infilled in vescular basalt. Look at all those big terms I'm using. Makes me sound smart. A little bit of coppery look in here. Copper's always good. 
Well, we definitely found a chunk of this seam in situ, meaning in place in the bedrock. It's coming right down through there. We've broken off multiple pieces of it now. Cash is just, where's the piece you have there, Cash? Oh, it fell. It fell, uh-oh. <laughs> Right, oh, right, 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 underneath there, it, right, right, right underneath your bag. Definitely a calcium base in a seam here. Got some magnetic properties. We definitely see rust, so there's sulfides of some sort rusting out of it. That's kind of what we're looking for. Again, let's get the close-up on it. Kind of a calcium with an agate sort of banding in this seam, but definitely a layer of iron that's rotted away. And the host rock is very magnetic. The calcium is not. So Cash, when you're taking a sample like this, what kind of information are you recording in your book? Basically anything you can come up with. Color, size of the crystals that you see, veining, is it magnetic, is it not magnetic? Basically anything that you can see to describe the rock. So when you go back or when the samples come back, you have a reference of what that rock looked like and you can then reference that to the sample. And I assume the first thing you write down is some sort of reference number and probably coordinates, right? Cor correct, so for me, I would do two, three representing the year, CCP, Cash Callahan Prospector, and then my sample number, and then the coordinate, and I'd mark it in my GPS, and then also write the coordinate in the book, so you always have two reference points in case the computer dies or in case you lose your book. And then a third, you do your tag and your butter tag and flagging Correct. so that if you lose all that information, you can locate it back in the field. Location, alteration, type of alteration, amount of alteration, sulfides, amount of sulfides, what kind of sulfides, topography, magnetic, magnetic, as you said, acidic, acidic uh, yeah. if you ch check it if it's uh, reacting, reacting to uh, acid, um, outcrop. Or not outcrop. Yeah, what kind is it? Is it an outcrop? Is it float? Is it sub outcrop? Basically, as much information as you can give. All that information for that one little rock for one little sample. And, Every single sample. And we plan to do like a hundred of them today. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that backpack is going to be fun to put on. Whew, I'm glad I saw that. I'll put it down on the cactus bush. The boys are squealing down there. Squealing, I tell you. They just found a rattlesnake. A little baby rattler. You should have seen Sibo jump. This is not a rattler. I think it's a bull or a gopher snake. Well, we've moved from that ridge over there to this ridge over here. And I do start, I am starting to see something a little more exciting right where I'm at. This is definitely a seam of some sort. It looks like calcite quartz. Sibo just saw, said he saw some calcite as well. So that is a little bit more exciting and I see more of it. There's a chunk right there. Again, we're in the float right now, but we're right below an outcrop. So it's probably coming from right there. A little more exciting. Well, there it is right there. There's a calcium seam in situ, in place. And that's where those pieces of calcium below would have come from. Very boring. There's nothing really, yeah, nothing exciting about that, except for the fact that it shows hot fluids were flowing through these rocks at some point a billion years ago. I'm not gonna bother actually pulling any of it out. It's not anything exciting enough to even take a sample of, as I keep hammering. What a view! The Midway Mine is just down there. Ocean Picture Stone just over there. Our trucks are just over there. We were prospecting way over there. Sibo's wait up there. <laughs> what a view from up here. Oh, I'm glad we did it. Sibo found something good. What'd you find, Sibo? A rock to push over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> boys will be boys. I don't know if we'll try to get it out of there. Your way. I know, I'm just trying to loosen it. Ready? Pull two boards, you all push. One. I'm just trying to loosen it. Yeah, go. One, two. <laughs> Boys will be boys. Go, go, go. Oh. Ah! Nice. Over the edge he goes. Sebo. That was a good one. He's a teenager. <laughs> Freaking teenager, I tell ya. Sebo just said he found something promising. Heavier iron alteration than we've seen. But, no. Nothing too, nothing too, nothing too exciting. Oh, 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 what do I got here? I just broke that chunk out of there with the hammer and we've got rust. Rust is always a good thing. It's a little bit of quartz there. That's why I started pounding on it. And 
we've come out with a deposit of some sort. Not a deposit, but you know, something a little more exciting than we've seen for a little bit. What you think, Sibo? It's pretty weathered, it's hard to tell. Limestone. It's a limestone. Acid on it, fizzing like that on the host rock means we're into limestone. Limestone with a little bit of iron in it rusting out makes it look exciting. We've got intrusives, so that's a good place for a scarring to happen. So let's keep our eye out. I open for a scarring. Not a scar, a scarring. <laughs> I see something interesting here. I see an excavation. I see a hole in the ground that is not natural. This is old time prospecting. No, not the way it came right from below. They okay. following this rusty quartz, look. Rusty quartz! Huzzah! We found something! Ha <laughs> ha! That's what prospecting's about. Sample time. I love trees that fall because they pull the bedrock up with them. And you can see in amongst the roots of that rock, all sorts of great... Roots of that rock? Roots of that tree. All sorts of great rock. I'm getting yeah. tired here. Uh, and off on the one side, I actually see a piece of rusty quartz. Yeah. I think I see another one way off on the other side, which means that tree might be growing right down onto the deposit. Some of the best samples I've found come out of up, uprooted trees. So let's go I, look. I concur. Let's do it. That's nice. I see it on the ground too. I see little pieces oh, yeah, right of... There. Look right above that. Yep. Yep. Yep, exactly. Oh. Drive it into the ground. Yep. It could also be quartzite. Great samples. A little buggy where some sulfides have rotted away. You can still see some sulfides in the currently rotting away. Lots of quartzite in there. Great looking stuff. We got a good sample from here. Let's go see what Sibo's got. Sibo is loving this. Okay. Hope, hopefully there's too, not too much rain on the lens here. It's raining pretty good out, but we found some nice, nice material. You say you find, found some good sulfides in it? Oh yeah, there's uh, these chert areas that are darker gray and they're loaded with sulfides. And in here, it, it's definitely got a gray demeanor to it and looks more like Arsino pyrite. And there's some black arsenic. Li lick it. Little, <laughs> little pods in here. But definitely, someone did an old trench here, and we've got some. Well, I think I got some malachite there. A little bit of copper. A little bit of arsenic. Yeah. A whole lot of gold. You never know. Well, I was really hoping we'd find that one real woohoo sample, and so far this is it. It is a woohoo sample. Uh, I'm very happy to see this. We actually hiked a lot already, and we found stuff but nothing that made us excited. This makes us excited. How excited are you? Woo! Very excited. Looks like we've got a contact between limestone and something else. Between something and something else. But there's some, we have something. Oh, there's some magnetite actually. <laughs> so we can definitely see the direction this deposit is going where they did the trench. They followed the seam. So I'm going to walk straight down in the same direction of it, seeing if I can see any more outcrops. Sibo's going one way. Cash is going the other. We'll all work around and work down to the bottom and see what we can find. We definitely see in the debris from that pit, all sorts of it. Like it's everywhere in the debris of that pit. We are finding big chunks of it right below. Great big chunk there, great big chunk. Another big chunk over there. Well, there we are. There's the sample of the day. That one I may actually keep. That one may go up for auction. If anyone wants a chunk of what I was prospecting today, I may take that one home and throw it up for auction. Don't know what's in it, but there's a nice piece of the quartz from that deposit. Sibo's hooting and hollering about something he found down there. Let's go see what we can, what it looks like. I see fragments of that deposit up above all down this slope. Oh yeah, this looks like... Look at that. Huh. Well, that's interesting because we we're like, what, a quarter K from... About that, about a quarter kilometer from the... Site. Less than a kilometer, that's for sure. On our way back to the truck here, we're walking across the neighbor's claim. We found uh, this great deposit of serpentine, which we kind of knew was here, but uh, really nice stuff. Really neat to look at. But again, we're on the neighbor's claim at the moment. We think. We're heading back to the truck. We just scared up a massive owl down in the draw there, flew by. Really cool to see. I'm getting tired there, Sibo. Take off your purse, you'll be fine. <laughs> and we're almost back at the vehicles. We had so much fun out there. Now the video is not done at this point. We're going to go back to Grizzly's camp and have a look at what we found today and maybe show you what's going to happen with these samples from here. Plus, I got to talk with Grizz about, you know, 
maybe sell them on this piece of property. Hey, Cash, what do you have on your back? It's an antler shed. Oh, or, oh you mean my rack? <laughs> nice rack. rack. Thanks, honey. Well, we walked up to the top of that mountain. We walked over to the top of that mountain. I think there was actually one more that we got to the top of that you can't see because it's oh. behind the trees. Then we walked down into the valley and back this way. That was one heck of a loop. Hopefully I can get the GPS uh, map off you guys just to show you where we walked. We got wet. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. just like, soaked. There's only like this much left of pants that are still dry. <laughs> I know, no, me, was, me too. No, like, I am just soaked top to bottom. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. oh they've come out. Oh yeah, oh, there's yeah. water. <laughs> just soaked, but so much fun. Yeah, I think we'll have to get that onto a computer before yeah. you know camera can pick that up. Sibo was excited about something. A four-leaf clover! I find them all the time. It's so weird. <laughs> it's your lucky day. It's my lucky day, hanging out with the boys, having fun. Ooh, that might be a good omen for those samples we just pulled. And also, just to make sure people know um, that we're doing things properly and legally and everything, as we crossed over, we did cross over someone else's claim, and we looked at rocks on the way. We didn't take any samples. We waited till we got onto my claim before we sampled all the way. And then on the way down, again, we crossed onto someone else's claim and had a great look at a bunch of the mineral specimens on the way. Some really neat serpentine, uh, really neat all sorts of stuff there on someone else's claim of course we didn't take any samples we did some you know not prospecting but looking and as we came down through someone else's claim again no samples all the samples we took were up on mine which is the high ridge just in case anyone sees that we were on someone else's claim and thinking oh that, that claim jumper he's bad no we are doing things appropriately and properly so on the way out we stopped on the other side of the property here i've got an old added an old uh, mine showing of some sort that i want the guys to see and sample. We found this a few months ago. Over there we found an old adit and the guys have not sampled it yet so I thought I'd take them in and show them where it's at. Uh, us old guys are dying here after a day of doing this. Young buck up front, he can go all day. I think it's around here somewhere guys. Oh right over there underneath those trees. And here we are. We have a little bit of a mulch pile here. There's a little bit of a trench over the trees there and right and right here. Uh, that tree's coming out of a hole. Check out that big one down at the bottom. We set that aside last time we were here. Break it, man, break it, you can do it. There we go, nice fresh break. Is that some green I see? Maybe, maybe not. Looks like that altar mafic, right? And it's been altered to list one night. A little like, bit of green. Maybe. Possibly some copper. I think it's more like blue quartz. Apparently this is fuchsite. Be very careful how you say that. Fuchsite. Fuchsite, green chrome mica. I would think, it definitely doesn't look like copper out. There's another pit right here. Nothing too exciting looking though. Oh no, never mind. There's quartz here too. Same looking stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. I smell pack rat. I don't know why I smelled the rock to see if it smelled like pack rat, but totally right stuff. Yeah, he's got something. He found another trench down here. I heard a thump, thump, thump of a rock being broken. And then a whoa! Oh yeah, definitely trenches. I see them here. There's like one, two, three. Yeah, they're on the other side, that knob, trying to follow it. Right there, too, there's another three. A little pocket of, like, bladed calcite with what looks to be malachite. Nice. Oh, yeah, definitely. We got yep. trenches everywhere. Nice. A little more copper staining. I have a mosquito bite in my forehead. Ow! <clears throat> there's a lot of mosquitoes here, but nice looking material in these little trenches. There's oh, yeah, trench, there's a bit of trench, there. trench. For sure. Sibo, sulfides. Yeah, a little pocket through here, following this little veinlet. Trench. That's probably a one there too. This is prospecting. Nice. There seems to be a pit between these two trees. That's not natural, that's for sure. They were looking at something here. We found some puffballs. Puffballs. Well, here we are back at the Grizzly Discoveries camp. We're gonna have a good look at the samples that we got today and explain where it goes from here. And if you're wondering how many samples a small exploration company does, yes, we took a few dozen today, but every one of these bins is full of samples of one sort or another from either drilling or from prospecting or from bulk samples. A small junior exploration company does a lot of prospecting. And then there's the core boxes. These are full of cores from drilling programs they've done in the past. I think this is all last year's drilling programs here. 
and just core after core after core. And if you'll notice here, the cores, they're half because they take the cores and they slice them in half, they cut them in half, half goes away to get assayed, half stays here for the geologists to look at. So when the assays come back, they can go back to where the assays say are good and have a look at the core and see what the material looked like before it got crushed down and assayed. And again, a good sized junior exploration company does a lot of drilling and has a lot of core. And because it is a publicly traded company on the stock exchange, there's lots of rules they have to follow. And one of the rules is they have to keep all of their samples, all of their cores, all their assay results, all of their prospecting samples, they have to keep them all. So we end up with huge storage yards going back years, if not decades. And at Grizzly Discoveries, at their camp, they have this bunkhouse here for all the workers. I'm not sure how many they can sleep in there, a dozen or more. Plus they have some other facilities around for their workers to stay in. And there's Grizzly, the owner of Grizzly Discoveries, or not the owner, the CEO, the... The CEO. The CEO of Grizzly Discoveries. All the shareholders own Grizzly Discoveries. Exactly, the shareholders own Grizzly. Grizzly is just the CEO. Yeah. But we'll talk with you a little bit later. Yeah. Good day. Excellent. There's the samples of the day. Beauty. That's our it's part of our core library where you can... Samples of each type of rock that you might come across in this area? Yeah, and then it helps the geos log the core that show up because some of them haven't necessarily been in that area and they get to get associated with what's around here. Sibo, what you doing right now? Just organizing the bags in order. Uh, getting everything ready. By the end of the year, I mean, Kasha and I are around the corner. We got, last year we got over 300 samples. So keep them organized, make sure everything's good and get it ready to get bagged into rice bags when there's enough of them. And then they get labeled and sent off to ALS to get sampled. It's assayed. It's assayed. Assayed. Sorry. Assayed. Yep. Howdy, Dad. Hey, Cash, what are you doing? I am bringing in uh, old core boxes from last year, just so we can have a look and show you what happens. This is from last year's uh, drill program? Yes. yes. So last year's drill program would have been the year before his prospecting. Year yes. before prospecting would tell you where to drill last year. Last year's prospecting is where you're learning, you would decide where to drill this year, yes. which is all around the uh, Midway, Midway Mine. Yes. Midway Mine is a big one for us this year. And the prospecting that we're doing today, this yes. year, will determine what next year's drill program yes. will be. And to be clear, if this wasn't already announced in, in a our, press release in already, press release, we couldn't show you this. If this was this year's drill, we couldn't even show it. Yes, to you. we're in a locked room right now because yes. this stuff is private until it goes public. Yes. So that there's no insider trading type stuff that goes on on the stock exchange. Absolutely, and we have a chain of custody that's pretty strict about how samples are brought to ALS, etc. Perfect. Now, Sibo, I see on lots of these things red, blue, yellow marks. What does that mean? First thing is for the core comes in, it gets cut. Half of it goes into a sample bag, half of it comes here. This is core has been teched. Actually, sorry, it gets teched first. And so it gets measured into meters mark, RQD, which is recovery. Uh, we like to circle high juicy areas of sulfides. Um, and then the sample marks are made so that we, you know, the guys who are cutting knows that this is where he stops. And usually the geos kind of stick to lithologies. Like you'll get one area from here to here where let's say it will be an intrusive, we will sample that. And then the next one, you know, to keep it into zones so that we understand what's happening as we go, as we're going down into the ground. And now this room is pretty quiet right now, but typically you would have two to three geos in here, geologists yes. in here, looking at each of these cores yes. and deciding what is in them and what's important, what's not important, what's worth further investigation. 100%. So like I said, there'll be the geotechs and then the geos. The geotechs will come in and tech the core. And then once it's tech, the geos will come in and log the core. And they will go in and be like, okay, and a site. You know, we've got a scar in here, we've got this, and they will log it. And they're looking under a loop for sulfides, for gold, for all that kind of stuff. Anything. Yeah. We're trying to be as descriptive as you can so that when it comes back, we can look back and be like, oh, wow, that was a really rich sample. What was it? Oh, wow, okay, it's a scar. And like the, you know, the, the geos marked out that beautiful zone. And right. And the geos and techs aren't here yet at the camp because the drilling program for this year has not yet started. For down here at the Rock Creek Project, not yet. Yeah, so once the drilling program starts and new drill core starts coming in, 
then those guys will be in this room and it'll start getting busy in here. Oh yeah, well, last year I think we had 24 people at camp. Wow. You can see here, like when you get an area that has some sulfide showing, you'll put some yellow to, just to help the geos, the text will just help the geos like, hey, look over here. Let's get the close up on that, see what it looks like. There we go. You see that band of sulfides? That's like iron pyrite or calcopyrite. Kind of looks like an iron pyrite, I think. But uh, marked off with the yellow on both sides so that uh, it's easy to note where the sulfides were in this core. So neat slick graphite on this piece. And again, this is all last year's uh, drill program. So this has already been announced publicly. This year's drill program, well, we have big hopes for it because it's the Midway Mine. And we got some nice samples from that last year. Do you have an idea where this stuff is from? This would be from the mother load. The mother load. Above uh, Greenwood. Okay. Okay, and as I said, last year's uh, prospecting will determine this year's drilling uh, at the Midway Mine. That's where a lot of the drilling is going to happen this year because we got some really good assay results from the Midway. I know uh, earlier, a previous video, I announced some numbers, but we actually got better than that since then. Sebo, do you remember what the numbers of gold and silver were in that one assay you got? So last year, off the top of my head, the best sample I got was 70 grams per ton gold, 2,700 grams per ton silver, and we had some over limits in, in other areas like arsenic and uh, maybe even zinc lead. I can't zinc remember. Lead. There were some other high numbers in there too. 70 grams per ton gold. That's what my viewers want to hear. Yeah. That's, that's over two ounces per ton gold on one sample. Yeah, and it was like fi over 50 ounces silver. So I can't remember what it was. Crazy yeah. numbers. So that's why they determined that the drill program for this year is going right back to that spot to see if those numbers on the surface continue at depth and to map, start mapping out the ore body that's down there to see how much volume of that kind of grade there might be. Yeah. That's We're excited we about that one. And as the boys are saying right now, that's a, a little bit oversimplified that saying just sampling leads directly to drilling. There's a lot of geophysics that goes on. There's a lot of mapping. There's a lot of stuff that goes on before you get the drill there. And then once the drill's there, there's a lot more that goes on after the fact. And, you know, ideally in the perfect world, you go through all those steps at the very end, that's when you turn it into a mine. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's the holy grail right there. That's what we're looking for. Looking for a big resource. You bet. And now I think it's time for me to go inside, talk with Grizz about some sort of deal on that property. So I believe I've already introduced Grizz here from Grizzly Discoveries. Hello everybody. Now Grizz, obviously Grizz is not your name. Uh, that's your nickname, right? Yeah. yeah that's My what everyone calls you. Brian Testo and it's Brian Grizz Testo. We all know him as Grizz, for sure, from Grizzly Discoveries. Now, him and I have, you know, sat down and arm wrestled and uh, drove a hard... He drives a hard bargain, that's for sure. We came up with a good deal for the claim, but we can't announce it here on video because it is a publicly traded company. It has to go before the board, we have to get approvals, all that kind of stuff first. But, yes, we do have a deal in the works Definitely, for that. Yes. It's really nice working with Grizz and Grizzly Discoveries here. They've bought claims off me before, this is another one, and I think there will be more in the future as well. There definitely will be, yeah. Definitely. We're so, good, Grizz. We're a good partnership. It is a great partnership. Grizz, if people wanted to invest in Grizzly Discoveries, how do they find you? Just go online or phone a broker, and uh, it's under Grizzly Discoveries, GZD in Canada, GZDIF in the United States, and uh, just you got to go through a broker or have your own uh, online brokerage uh, account. And then you can buy Grizzly. Grizzly, Grizzly Stocks, yes. Grizzly Discoveries Inc, it's called. Check out online on the TSX and the... Uh, TSX and on the OTC. On the OTC for Grizzly Discoveries. And yes, I can attest, it is a great exploration company. Yeah, well, we do our best to uh, try and add value for the shareholders. Everybody works really hard. Everybody's dedicated and loyal. And uh, it's, a, it's a good team to be working with. And I'm, I'm going to be really happy to be working with Dan again, because Dan's such a good partner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, the contract for, the, for you know, an option agreement or something, that will come in the future. But you've told me before that your handshake is worth better than a contract. Uh, way better than a contract contract there we go I, I tell people my handshake i've never broke yet there we go we have a handshake deal on the new claim up behind the midway mine and we're very happy with the results that we got today well with the prospecting samples we saw today and those results may determine some new drilling for next year yes very good yeah sounds great 
So I should note that I have no formal connection with Grizzly Discoveries, other than the fact that they have optioned a bunch of my ground in the Greenwood and Rock Creek area. I'm not an employee, I, I do have shares in the company, but I'm not, you know, on the board or anything like that. I have no real formal connection. But as you can tell, I have thrown my support behind the company. I believe in them 100%. I am friends with everyone there. It is a great junior exploration company. Absolutely. And if you want to get involved in a mining company that I am somewhat involved with, obviously the easiest way to do that is, you know, buying shares in Grizzly. And, you know, there's no benefit for me if you buy shares in Grizzly, but I think it is a great investment. I think that company will go far. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I earned your subscription. I hope you left a like, and I hope you're having a great day. Until the next one. Bye.